Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about five new weapons that have been added to Battlefield 4 CTE. These guns will all launch in the near future once the game is further patched. They're even working on some extra gun tweaking and some new netcode improvements. So BF4 is still constantly under development and constantly looking for ways to improve upon itself. DICE has also brought back Gunmaster in CTE and we'll be seeing a little bit of footage from that later in this video and I'll give you my initial impressions on that game mode. It's pretty much copy and paste from BF3 with a few changes here and there. The five new weapons in the game are pretty interesting and they add quite a bit of flavor. This one that I'm using here is the Groza one. In real life it's known as the OTS-14 Groza. It shoots the 7.62x39 style bullet and that's the same thing that the AKM or the AK-47 fires and what they've done is they've made it do 30 damage maximum. So you're going to get a nice four shot kill in close quarters adding a bit more flavor to the carbine category. And in fact since it boasts an 8 100 round per minute rate of fire this has now become the highest damage per second carbine available in the game. Now to make up for its incredibly high damage potential they've given it some pretty hefty recoil and not the best aiming down sight accuracy so basically it's kind of more of a close quarter weapon and you're going to need to use it there to get the full benefit. It's got a fairly medium short reload time of 2.6 seconds so you're still going to have to be careful in close quarters when reloading with this weapon but it does have some interesting hip fire accuracy. So there's definitely some potential with this weapon and I'm going to be keeping my eyes on it. Next weapon is the L86A2 making a return from Battlefield 3. This is a light machine gun that's going to be available for the support class. This gun is pretty much as close to an assault rifle as you can get but still equipped on the support class. It has a 30 round magazine, a fairly fast reload, and then a damage model and accuracy plot that remind you a lot of an assault rifle. And you might be thinking, whoa, 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 why is the gun super white? Well, we're looking at it in CTE and they haven't applied the textures to four of the five guns yet. So we've got a white box model pretty much all the other weapons. If you're not familiar with the aesthetic look of this weapon, just think L85, but slightly longer. Now, personally, I would have much rather seen the more modern M27 IAR instead of this weapon, since it's probably replacing this machine gun in many cases, but the devs have their reasons for picking this weapon, I'm sure. Next on the list, we have the AN94. There's some diehard AN94 fans from Battlefield 3 who have wanted this gun back for a long time. It's even got that infamous two round burst mode that uh, so many people like to use in BF3. Now personally this weapon has always bothered me even from Battlefield 3. I think it's clunky, you don't get the real life benefits of it, and the people who really like it are using it in a way it was never intended to be used in real life. It's just sort of a weird way that the gun seems to work well in Battlefield 3 if you can tap fire at the perfect intervals. Now normally when this gun is set in auto fire mode it shoots 600 rounds per minute. Not really going to wow anybody or make any sort of overpowered assault rifle. However in the two round burst mode in BF3 anyway shot around 1200 rounds per minute which means if you could tap fire in perfect rhythm you could shoot almost 1200 rounds per minute making it an incredibly powerful AR. However tap firing at those perfect intervals while also maintaining perfect accuracy was a very hard thing to do so people who had mastered it ended up loving this assault rifle even though they're using it in a way that it was essentially never really intended to be used and in fact a lot of people were setting up macros with this weapon so that they could shoot it as fast as it possibly could and basically we're getting an unfair advantage on other players now the actual design of this weapon is designed to shoot two rounds in what they call a hyper burst which puts both rounds in the exact same location before the weapon even recoils and this gave it great armor penetrating capabilities the first round would potentially shatter some of the armor there and the second round would actually go through and then you get a good armor piercing AK. Now in Battlefield 3, because this weapon did 25 maximum, you could potentially burst fire at somebody's head. Both shots would go in the exact same spot and you would get a one burst takedown on your opponent, which was very cool. The gun no longer does that in BF4 though, it only does 24 maximum, so you're never going to get that one burst headshot takedown. Now personally, I think it would be awesome if DICE went the extra mile with this gun and gave it some cool properties, like if you're shooting it in the two round burst mode, you would make it so that the second round did some bonus damage, so you could 
potentially get that one burst fire headshot takedown. Anyway, through my playing with this on CTE, I wasn't particularly impressed with its performance. Now let's take a look at an engineer PDW that's been added to the game. This is the Groza 4, very similar to the Groza 1, however, it's got a built-in suppressor, it's firing a subsonic round, so it does a little bit less damage than the Groza 1, 26 maximum, so you can still four shot kill somebody in close quarters. Um, it's got decent hip fire accuracy, but unfortunately it has a slower rate of fire than the Groza 1, a slower reload speed, and a smaller magazine capacity. This gun's probably going to need to see a little bit more love in the stats department if DICE plans on seeing anybody actually using it on the battlefield. Now this next gun I want to talk about is truly unique. It's an awesome addition to Battlefield 4. It's called the Mare's Leg. This actually comes from an old TV show called Wanted Dead or Alive. The main character in that show, played by Steve McQueen, uses a cut down Winchester Model 1892, which is basically a lever action rifle, but he's cut it down so that he can holster it like a pistol. So what does this actually mean for Battlefield 4? Well, if you've ever wanted a pocket sniper rifle for any class in the game, you can now get one. It's not going to be as good as your traditional bolt action sniper rifle, but it's still pretty capable, especially in the right hands. The gun will do 56 damage maximum, but its drop off starts at 15 meters, so you can only get a little bit beyond 15 meters before you're going to need more than one shot to take down your opponent with a headshot. And max range is going to do 37.5 damage, so that means even a headshot will not down your opponent. Its muzzle velocity is 520 meters per second, so it's not going to be the most ideal long range weapon, but it is certainly a cool alternative to your traditional pistol. Simply put, it can't go toe to toe with your average bolt action rifle, but it is a great way to give any class basically a really good long range alternative. I'll be honest, I'm probably most excited about this weapon and I'm a little bit concerned that it might turn Battlefield 4 into a sniper fest. Now how about the return of Gunmaster in Battlefield 4? This was a game mode in Battlefield 3. It wasn't particularly popular, but it was fun if you were kind of bored and wanted a little bit of a change up from the standard tactical gameplay. And if you're unfamiliar with how Gunmaster works, it's basically a weapons progression game mode. It's similar to Team Deathmatch. Everybody starts off with the same gun though, and after you get two kills with that gun, it'll switch you on to the next gun in the list. And when you get two kills with that, it'll switch you on to the next gun, and so on and so forth until you finally have the last weapon required to get a kill with and then uh, once you get a kill with that you'll win the game so it's kind of every man for himself but you're on a team and that's one of the things I never really liked about Gunmaster. One of the new features with this in Battlefield 4 and I say new feature even though it was promised in BF3 but uh, was never actually implemented is the ability for admins to customize the progression of the weapon so you can choose whatever guns uh, people are going to start with and have them end on whatever gun you want so that should make it up a bit but I'm still not really on board with the whole team deathmatch setup of it because you get into a situation where you'll do like 90% damage to a guy and then your teammate will kill him and basically get the upgrade and get ahead of you and it's really annoying when you have either crappy teammates or extremely good teammates because they're either always stealing your kills or never backing you up and then players on the enemy team are getting way ahead simply because they just have better teammates. I feel like a free for all style game mode would make much more sense but I don't even know if that's possible to do in Battlefield 4 in its current state because there's always been two factions in game so how do you set up a free-for-all. Maybe they just don't know how to set that up. Either way though, it does offer a nice little change of pace from the standard game modes in Battlefield 4, even if it's not particularly well balanced. Now I'm not sure when these new guns in game mode are going to transfer to the retail version of BF4, hopefully soon, because it's actually kind of hard to find infantry-centric game modes in CTE right now. There's a lot of large conquest vehicle-oriented servers, and when I'm trying to get kills with the AN-94, I'm getting blown up with helicopters and tanks. So it doesn't really cater to a good testing environment of the actual weapons that well. So hopefully we can actually just see it in the finished product sooner rather than later. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Let me know which gun you guys are most excited to see from the five new weapons. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.